around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> so the body could get at you. <coughs> Doggone bee buzzing around his head all day, get out of the body's brain. Ah. Oh, God, no luck. You know, a sting doesn't do him any good either, Chuck. Oh, Mr. Dillon. Well, I tell you, I'd as soon get stung as listen to all that buzzing. Well, let him sting you then and get it over with. Oh, no, Mr. Dillon, I can't rightly do that. Well, why don't you try opening the window? No, 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 I just closed it. That's how he got in in the first all place. All right. that window, but... He was trying to get out all the time, Chester. Well, now, you, you can't be too sure of that, Mr. Dillon. Why, I've no bees to just absolutely ignore. Well, well, Miss Church. Hello, Chester. Matt. Hello, Samantha. Come on in, sit down. Yeah. Here's chair, man. Thank you. Uh, Matt, uh, I need your help. Uh, sure, Samantha. What can I do? Well, it's George. George? Is he in some kind of trouble? That's what I don't know. He ain't come home since day before yesterday. A home from where? Home from right here in Dodge. He rode in from the ranch Monday morning, and I ain't seen him since. <laughs> that doesn't sound like George. Staying away two nights? No, Matt, it don't. I didn't worry too much about the first night. Man has a right to do some celebrating every now and then, but... Uh, Samantha, was he celebrating something special? was mighty special to us, Matt. He just worked the place free and clear. We sold our first big stand of cattle, Matt, and the money took care of all that we was owing. Uh-huh. Uh, was George bringing the money to town? He saddled up the minute he got it. He rightly couldn't wait to pay off that note, Matt. Yeah. All right, Samantha, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go over to the bank. They ought to know something about this. I've been there. I've been every place else I could think of in town... Nobody's seen him. Seems like he never got here at all. Yeah. Tell me this. Who else knew that George was bringing in the money? Nobody. Except maybe Ben. He probably knowed about it all right. Ben? Oh, he's the one who helps you run the place, right? Yes, Matt. We took him in when he was just a little boy. Ray got his mom and pa. He's just like our own. Yeah. Nobody else knew? Well... Hobie Price come riding up just as George come out of the barn. They rode off together. Well, have you seen Hobie since then? I asked around for him, Matt, but I ain't found him. Uh-huh. Matt? Yeah? I, I ain't never been one to give way. I know you haven't. I, I've got a bad feeling about this, Matt. i got a bad feeling about George. I ain't slept. Samantha, there's no use for a bad feeling yet. You just let me start looking, huh? Yeah. I guess it got to. I ain't getting nowhere. You go on home now. You try to get some rest. It isn't going to do George any good for you to get worn down. I guess you're right. Sure, I'm right. Uh, maybe, uh... Maybe you better go see Doc, huh? 
I got no need for Doctor and Matt. Just you find George. Yeah, I'll start looking, Samantha. Right now. Hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Down. I haven't got time, Kitty. I, uh, I'm looking for Hobie Price. Hobie Price? Yeah. Has he done something? I'm not sure. You seen him lately? Oh, no, let me see. Um, he hasn't been in today. Uh, it's the last couple of days I'm interested in. What, last night? Uh, no, night before. Well, we was in men all right, man. Did you talk to him? <laughs> Nobody could have talked to him that night. Well, what do you mean? He was drinking whiskey like he wasn't ever going to get any more. Buying drinks for everybody in the place. Ah, I see. You, uh, you haven't seen him since? No, ma'am, I haven't. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if he was still sleeping at all. All right, Kitty. Thanks. Uh, are you off to look for Hobie Prince? Uh, he's one of the people I'm looking for. I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, Matt. See you later. Chester. I declare I don't see why we're doing all this riding when all we got to do is find Hobie Price. Maybe. Well, I mean, don't Miss Church seen him ride off with her husband, didn't she? Yeah. And Miss Kitty said she seen him throwing his money around that night, didn't she? Yeah. And he ain't nowhere to be found around Dodge, is he? No. Well, I Miss Dillon, it just makes sense. We ought to be riding off after Hobie Price instead of wasting time out here at the church place. Chester, do you know which direction Hobie Price rode off in, do you? Well, no. No, Mr. Dillon, I don't. You I... think we should just sit and dodge and wait until he comes back, do you? Well, no, sir. All right, then. Something else might have happened to church. He might have had an accident riding in. I want to look the countryside over real good. Yes, sir. Now, there's a lot of land to cover on the church spread. When we get to the fork, you ride off north and I'll ride south. We'll meet at the ranch house. All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, don't just stick to the trail, Chester. Take a good look around any trees and through the bushes. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'll look real good. Even though there ain't hardly no likelihood of finding it. Now, you make up your mind about that later. All right, Mr. Dillon, but all the same. There's the fork. All right, you go that way. You sure you won't need me with you? I think I'll be able to handle it, Chester. Why don't you go along now? All right, Miss Dillon. I guess you know what you're doing. Well, I know what I want you to do anyway. Go on. Get... Chester? Oh, sir. I didn't find nothing. And I look real good, too. Yeah. All right, come on in. Ah, Chester didn't find anything either, Samantha. Oh. Well, thanks for looking anyway, Chester. Oh, yes, ma'am. And I'm sorry I didn't find nothing. Oh, I mean... Now, this is Ben Stanley, Chester Proudfoot. I do. Oh, Chester... We've given the ranch and the road to town a good looking over, and we haven't found a thing. You got any ideas, Ben? No, Marshal, I don't. Mr. Church rode off just like he'd always done. Oh, he set off a bit earlier than usual. Oh, yeah, he done that all right. He was mighty anxious to get that money to the banker. Yeah. Did you see him before he left? Well, yes, Marshal, sure he did. I helped him saddle up. Now, he didn't say anything to you special about... Anybody he was going to see or anything? Huh? Only the banker. 
Seemed like that was the only thing on his mind. Getting the money there and that note paid off. Never set well with George owing any money. He wanted things free and clear. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, did you and George uh, have any kind of what, trouble lately? You know, like a, a argument or something? Oh, Matt, if you're thinking he might just have rode off from me, that ain't so. No arguments, sir. Well, I ain't saying George and I never had our differences, because we did, sure enough. We got along, Matt. We was comfortable together. He, he wouldn't have rode off, would he, Ben? No, ma'am. No, there wasn't ever nothing like that, Marshal. There's no cause for thinking it. Yeah. All right. Matt. You, you think you'll find him? Lots of people turn up, Samantha. We'll keep trying. <laughs> I can't say I'm sorry to be back in the office, Miss John. You're getting to be a homebody, John. Uh, no, no, that ain't so. But I ain't one who want to waste a whole day just riding around in the hot sun, I'll say that. You'll live. Oh, yes, sir, Miss John. I'll live all right. But we might just as well have stayed here. That's the thing that bothers me. Oh, never mind, Chester. Maybe something came in the mail that's worth your while. I sure do hope so. <sighs> Uh, Chester, would you light some place? You're starting me to fidget on. Oh, well, sure, sure, Mr. John. You, you go right on ahead and read your letters. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. I'm going to itch in place What? Oh, uh, nothing, Mr. John. Nothing at all. I'd... Huh. Chester, what's the matter with you? You got a beetle under your shirt or something? Why, no, sir, Miss Dillon, but it does seem that there is always some place that needs scratching. Well, something bite you? Oh, no, sir, I ain't been bit. They just these little red patches here. See there? Look. See? Well, pull up your shirt. Yes, sir. Ah. You're sure breaking out in a rash. You better let Doc have a look at that. Oh, no, that ain't easy, Miss Dillon. It'll be all right. Just itch. It may be all right for you, but it's not all right for me. Seeing your scratch makes me itch, too. Well, I'm just doing Go I... on, Chester. Take your itch to Doc. This stuff ought to make you feel better, Chester. Now, hold still. <laughs> oh, now, don't tell me that hurts. Oh, yeah, well, it's cold, Doc. Oh, cold. I bet you're the only person in Dodge today complaining about anything being cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Oh, I'm glad to do it. I'd hate to see Matt bothered by your scratching the way you said he was. Oh, he sure was. I could have stood it all right, but Mr. Dillon... <laughs> He was getting pretty edgy about it. Uh, well, you're telling for me that he's lucky he only had you to contend with? How's that, Doc? I had another case just like yours yesterday. Ben Stanley. It's a funny thing, too. The first time I've seen Ivy poisoning this year, and then there's two of them in two days. All right, Chester. Put your shirt on now. Okay, Doc. So it was... Was Ben scratching real bad, too, Doc? Oh, was he? Like three hound dogs with fleas. He had a pretty good case of it. You know, that's good. Well, what's good about it? It's just good to know that somebody else scratched himself when he itched, that's all. And I bet Mr. Dillon would scratch himself, too. Well, he would if he had what you've got. Yeah. Now, here at Chester, you better take a bottle of the salon mm -hmm. and dab some of the lotion on your itchy spots every once in a while. It'll keep the itch down. Oh, well, thank you, Doc. That's all right, Chester. As the old saying goes, you, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. <laughs> oh, you want me to scratch your back, Doc? Oh, no, Chester, never mind. Just go scratch Matt's.
No, Kitty, I didn't find Hobie Price, and I didn't find anything at the church place. Well, you might as well have stayed right here. <laughs> You're thinking of all the beer I'd have bought. Huh? <laughs> we don't need your business today, Matt. An awful lot of people are drinking an awful lot of beer. Yeah, That's a good day for it. Uh, oh, here comes Chester. Yeah. Uh, Miss Dillon, excuse me, Miss Kibbert, I got some news for him. That's all right, Chester. What is it, Chester? Well, sir, I passed Moss Grimmick on the street, and he said a fellow rode in this morning said he'd seen Holby Price. Where? Blarn it. Says he's staying at a hotel there, big as you please. Well... Fixes us a nice hot ride for tomorrow. Yes, sir. Well, I hope you have more luck than you had today. Yeah, me too. Now, you must have seen Doc, Chester. You're standing still. Oh, yes, sir, I did. He gave me some white stuff in a bottle. You're supposed to do your drinking in here, Chester. Oh, no, no Miss Kitty, it, it wasn't a drink. It was to splash on myself to cure me of the itch. Oh. Thank goodness it's working. He was driving me crazy, Scratch. <laughs> Well, you better start worrying about yourself, Miss John. Oh, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, this itch may be something that's going to spread around. You might get it for yourself. Doc took care of Ben Stanley for it just yesterday. Oh, don't be silly, Chester. I never heard of an epidemic of poison ivy. Neither did I. Ben Stanley? Yes, sir. Doc gave him a bottle of the self-same lotion just yesterday. Chester. Hmm? Did you get off your horse when you were riding on the church place this morning? Well, yes, I did. I watered him at the creek that wandered all over the place there, down in them brambles. Real pretty little place there. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to see it again. Well, no, I ain't that anxious. To tell the truth, I'd rather... We'll be riding out there in the morning early. I thought you were going to learn it. Maybe I won't have to, Kitty. Come on, Chester. Let's go get some sleep. <laughs> All right, now, Chester, there's the creek. Yes, sir, I see it. You'll find the exact place where you got off your horse, huh? Well, yes, sir, but I don't see how it makes all that difference, so... Well, let me worry about that. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see, we're all along in here someplace. Yes, sir, I remember that dead log. All right, we'll leave the horses here. Did you smear Doc's lotion on this morning? Well, I didn't hardly think it was necessary. You may be sorry after you go through these bushes again. That was done? Yeah. If, if George Church was here, I'd have seen him yesterday, wouldn't I? I don't know, Chester. We'll just keep looking for a while. All through these bushes. All right. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get a shovel off one of the horses. Yes, sir. Hmm. Very neat job. Almost too neat. Come on, hurry up, Chester. I'm coming fast. I can, Mr. Dillon. Look down there. Mm, gracious alive. Looks like a grave. Yeah, fresh dug. We better see who's in it. Yes, sir. It ain't very deep. He's dug in a hurry. Mr. Don. Yeah, I was afraid of it. You reckon Hobie Price drug him here? Not unless he has a case of poison ivy. Oh, Mr. Dunn, you don't think... Yeah, Chester, I think Ben Stanley buried Church's body here and got the itch like you did. That nice young fellow, Mr. Dillon? Well, I could be wrong. I'd need a lot more than this to tell a judge anyway. You can't hang a man just for scratching himself. No, you can't, Chester. Come on, let's find out if I'm wrong. Mm. 
Marshal Dillon? Yeah, Ben. If I was you, I'd head south from here. I don't think you're going to find much up ahead. Well, there's a creek up there, isn't it, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. There's a creek there. Our horses will be needing a drink. We might as well ride that way. They can get a drink down this way, too, Marshal. Oh, not that it matters to me. I just want to help you look around. Yeah, thanks. I think we'll just go ahead for a little while. Marshal, uh, down that gully there. That'd be a good place to look. Yeah, we'll take a look at it after we give the horses a drink. Uh, Chester was down in those bushes yesterday. Got himself a bad case of poison ivy. Isn't that right, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Did you ever get it, Ben? No. No, it doesn't bother me, none. Nah. Doesn't bother me either. I guess we're lucky. Yeah. Lucky. You know, that rash on your neck looks an awful lot like Chester's. No. No, that ain't it. Oh, that's good. Now, here we are. You can lead the horses from here. Now, come on, Ben. Get down and give your horse a chance to drink. Sure, Marshal. Sure. <clears throat> Lead the horses down. Right about here ought to be a good place. No. I ain't going. Miss Dilly's making a run for it. Hold it, Stanley. Stay back. No, no, no. Shoot. Come on. You... You knew. You knew about it, didn't you, Marshal? Yeah, Ben, I knew. When did you find him? This morning. I didn't mean to kill him, Marshal. I didn't want to hurt him. Uh-huh. No, I only wanted the money. But he fought me for it. He fought me so hard, Marshal, I had to kill him. Yeah. I, I thought I was all right. Miss Church said you was after Hobie Price. I, I know he rode off to the Willits place, but nobody else did. And you weren't about to tell, were you? I didn't mean no harm to Mr. Church Marshal. If he'd just give up the money easy, if he just wouldn't have fought. You know, Ben, some men do funny things like that. Like what, Marshal? Fights for the things that belong to him. And other men get poison ivy. End up getting hung. All right, come on, Chester. Let's help him on his horse. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs> 